Hi, this is Salman Alana and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 217 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. Thrombus is not something we commonly hear about or have to deal with during CTO intervention. However, I will share this case with you that uh, involved a marathon treatment of intracoronary thrombus. The patient was a diabetic with previous coronary bypass graft surgery. He did have uh, multiple stents on the native RCA and brachytherapy, and uh, he had um, uh, occluded right coronary artery that uh, was considered to be a CTO and was sent for recanalization. This is a dual injection. We do have the occlusion within the previously placed RCA stents that goes all the way essentially to the PDA uh, PLV distal bifurcation. So what we have is a lesion with a tapered, well-defined proximal cap, long length of about 50 millimeters within the previously placed stent, distal vessel diffusely diseased, distal cap at the bifurcation, and then there were some septal collaterals coming from the LED. Given the favorable characteristics, the plan was to start with undergrade wiring, and then if that didn't work, go retrograde and leave ADR as the last option, given the bifurcation of the distal cap. In this case, we did use a cross boss catheter, which is something we don't routinely do. However, it can uh, shorten the time it takes to cross in CTO, and sure enough, uh, fairly quickly, the cross boss successfully crossed all the way into the distal trolumen, as confirmed by contralateral injection. So we were obviously highly encouraged by this, since uh, the treatment, uh, the crossing, is often the most time-consuming part of CTO intervention. We advanced workhorse wires, and uh, we did optical coherence tomography, which demonstrated actually a large amount of thrombus within the right coronary artery. We did balloon angioplasty, including um, balloon with an angioscult balloon, and this is the first uh, injection, showing a large thrombus burden in the RCA. There is no undergrade flow all the way to the PDA and to the posterior lateral. So what to do next? Uh, we used a dual lumen microcatheter as a suket to wire into the PDA, and then did uh, a kissing balloon inflation distally, and then used a penumbra device, which is usually our go-to device for large thrombus burden, we did uh, multiple passes, and uh, that retrieved some amount of thrombus. And then uh, we uh, used also an export catheter that went all the way to the posterior lateral and used the suction power from the penumbra pump. So here is the angiogram afterwards, a little better. So now we have some undergrade flow, but still huge uh, feeling defect in the distal RCA stents. We still have occlusion of the right posterior lateral. A lot of issues there. We gave intracoronary epinephrine and icardipine, which had given already 2B3A inhibitors, and then uh, did more aspirations, but there was still a poor flow into the vessel and large thrombus burden. In cases like this, what we will sometimes do after we've done so many aspirations and pharmacologic treatments is to let the patient uh, go to the floor on heparin and 2B3A inhibitors, so heparin and eptifibatide, and then bring them back two days later. And that's what we did, hoping that when we come back, we will see much better in geographic image. But to our dismay, what we found is that there was still a large filling defect. We still didn't have flow into the right posterior lateral. So what to do next? Once again, optical coherence tomography. And we do see again large thrombus burden inside the RCA in multiple locations, actually. So another way to try to get the clot out is to advance a filter wire. So we delivered a filter wire distal to the thrombus and tried to um, get it uh, back. We did multiple aspirations with the penumbra device and balloon angioplasty using the filter as a potential capture mechanism. And uh, in next injection, maybe a little improvement, but still there's a large filling defect in there. We pull the filter back, trying essentially to scoop out any thrombus in there. And um, there was some improvement, but still we do have a filling defect. 
You can pour flow into the posterior lateral. There was uh, this area here that appeared to be more of a lesion. So we did place a 2.5 by 18 millimeter drag eluting stent. And now we do have good flow into the right posterior lateral. But we still had the filling defect in the distal RCA. This time we did more penumbra and also we did laser. So laser can sometimes uh, burn and vaporize the thrombus, but unfortunately it didn't work in this particular case. And then we use a device that is uh, commonly used in stroke intervention. This is a solitaire X. So this is essentially a small nitinol mess. I can essentially trap the thrombus and remove it. And as I mentioned, this is something used in stroke intervention. It is a fairly flexible device. So we use the prograde microcatheter and then a 4 by 20 millimeter uh, solitaire X. And there it is trying to deploy it. We can see the markers of the solitaire being deployed inside the previous thrombus. And actually, this did help that we did get some large uh, thrombus pieces out with the solitaire X. And then we did um, um, multiple um, aspirations using a uh, guide extension, a guide liner deeply into the right coronary artery. So there it is now. It is better. It is not perfect by all means, so we did some more balloon angioplasty, cutting balloon angioscalp, 4 millimeter balloon, and uh, here is the OCT. So we still have thrombus burden, it's less than it was before, but we still have a bunch of thrombus into the RCA uh, within the previous stand, and uh, the more proximal part, there's also a thrombus there as well. Again, smaller size than before, but it has not gone away by any means. So, and this is the final angiogram. We do have timothy flow into the PDA, timothy flow into the posterior lateral, still feeling defects in the RCA, but uh, we decided that this was uh, enough at this point. We had done pretty much everything that um, we could think of for treating the thrombus. So what are the lessons from this case? First of all, that what is sometimes called a CTO might be a more acute occlusion. In this particular case, it appears that the stent had thrombosed, probably not too long prior to our intervention. And uh, maybe part of this was the brachytherapy that uh, prevents healing of the vessel and might have contributed to formation of the thrombus. Intravascular imaging is very important for treating thrombus, especially when it's hard to determine um, the presence of the thrombus. We did multiple things, balloon angioplasty, plaque modification balloons. We did multiple aspirations with penumbra. We gave several medications, septifipatide. We did the 48-hour marinating, essentially, of the lesion with some improvement. We did laser. And then probably the device that had the most impact in reducing the thrombus burden in this patient was the use of the Solitaire X, which is, again, is an off-label use of a device used for stroke in the coronary uh, circulation. And the patient actually did well and had an uneventful recovery. Thank you.